Hey VC, this is Mark with Final Crush and uh, I have a handful of uh, pretty eclectic records to show today because I'm doing a, uh, a 500 sub contest for uh, Michael with Noted and Archived and he's a very eclectic collector, probably one of the most eclectic on the vinyl community. Uh, I'm going to put a link to his channel below. Please check him out. He's uh, He's got everything from classical and neoclassical to jazz to death metal, and he knows a lot about his collection, so he gives a lot of really good information. He's a lot of fun to watch, so please check him out, subscribe. Um, he's got a bunch of questions he's asked of me, and actually, before I go there, I also want to mention that he has he's also a musician, and he has albums out. I have a couple of, of his albums in my collection. Uh, the name of his uh, group is called Balmoray. And, um, and they just recently got signed uh, by uh, Deutsch Grabenfon and they have a new album coming out. Um, I've already pre-ordered it. It's going to be amazing. But he's probably also celebrating that. So congratulations, Michael, on the subs and on the contract with uh, uh, Deutsch Grabenfon. And um, let's go on with the contest. So the first question that Michael asked is, show a record uh, that you discovered either via blind buy or something that you didn't know about before you bought it that blew you away. And um, the first one I'm going to show, uh, I was actually looking at records. This is back in early 2000s, and I would go to a record store every week to see what was coming out new. There wasn't a lot of things you could stream at the time, and they would put CDs on the uh, little players, and you can go in and put headphones on and listen to them and check out new music. And so that's how I would discover new music back then. And uh, I walked in one day, and they had this album out. Um, it's called Segundo. It's by Juana Molina. This came out in uh, 2000. Um, she was, uh, in the 90s, she was a very popular uh, comedian who had her own show. And uh, she's from Argentina. And, and at the height of her popularity, she left the show and started doing music. I guess it was kind of weird at first because when she toured her music, people would go to see her thinking she was going to do a comedy act and were a little disappointed apparently that she was doing music. But um, I picked this up and I was completely blown away. I knew nothing about her and, and I own probably six of her other records now too. Um, this is a first pressing, um, I believe. I think I picked it up a few years ago for like 70 bucks on on, uh, on Discogs, and now it's worth like 200 or something. It's really going up. Um, this is the Electronica, Electronica, um, uh, uh, world music, and um, uh, she plays the guitar. She uses looping. She has when she tours, she has musicians uh, playing percussion with her and some other things. Um, amazing amazing music this is this is to me mind-blowing and again this is something that I just picked up without knowing what it was and was completely blown away by it so highly recommend it I, I love this music if you like world music if you don't mind somebody singing in Spanish or German or some other languages than English uh, and you like interesting fun wild music that has Synthesizers, sometimes acoustic guitars, others. Um, this is this is your bag. This is really good stuff. So I wanted to show a more recent find that was something that I picked up um, that I didn't know anything about. I walked into a record store recently, and this was on the turntable. The Zion Harmonizers. This came out in like 1974. It's called "You Don't Have to Get in Trouble," and uh, this is this is. Uh, New Orleans gospel music essentially. It's got some jazz and um, funk and soul influences, but this is old school. This is 74. This is gospel. They did uh, grow. They're actually still performing today. I looked them up online and you can still uh, like have them perform for you. Uh, so uh, so I imagine the music has evolved a little bit, but I listened to some of the new stuff too and it was pretty similar. But it's just really incredible, fun, interesting gospel music, really exciting um, and unique New Orleans gospel. So this is something that I knew nothing about, came in and picked up a copy. Uh, I think it's the only but first pressing of uh, Zion Harmonizers. So the next question is to show two albums that show the polarity in your collection, something like a classical music piece and maybe death metal or something like that. So I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to show uh, something also that shows the, the other end of it, which is I'm going to show a, a 
a pop album and an anti-pop or not so pop album to really show what my collection looks like from the different angles or the different ends. And the first record I'm going to show is uh, Global Communication. This album is called 7614. It came out in 1994. It's electronica, it's down tempo, ambient. Uh, the name of the album, uh, 7614, is actually the number of minutes that uh, and seconds that it, this album plays. That's 74 minutes and or 76 minutes and 12 seconds or something. And um, and it's uh, it's very very ambient. Uh, my favorite song on here, the song that I originally heard that turned me on to this group back in the late, mid 90s, was called uh, 1218. And uh, so 12 minute and 18 second song. Um, but it's it's really gentle, nice, uh, interesting music. I don't know if there's anything to see here. Not really. So, uh, but this is the sort of soft end of my collection. And at the darker end of my collection, I'm going to bring out the Swans. This is their first LP. It's called Filth. And um, this came out in 1990 or 1983. 1983. And um, uh, this is a 1990 limited remaster. It's on uh, clear vinyl. And um, I, I have never seen an earlier pressing of this album. So I came upon this recently. Um, I like the Swans. I like their newer stuff a little better. This is industrial rock. It's kind of grinding and bleak and uh, deliberately repetitive. It kind of takes you into this bleak place and just kind of holds you down there for a long time. It's uh, it's pretty dark music. It's really good though. If you like this, um, The Swans is a good place to go. Um, one of my favorite albums by them is called uh, To Be Kind. It came out in like 2014. I also have a copy of that record. I saw them live a few years back and um, they were doing more music there, more current music is a little more, a little less grinding and bleak and a little more kind of droney, but still it's repetitive and hangs, hangs out there for a long time. It was a great show. Um, there's a song on the album To Be Kind called A Little God In Your Hands, I think. An amazing song. Just, I love this band. Really good. But this is the darker end. So then I'm going to jump over to the pop side of things to show a different element of my collection. And I'm going to show Taylor Swift, 1989. Uh, this album came out in 2014. Uh, this is the first pressing. Uh, I'll show the inside. Um, so, you know, Taylor Swift was sort of a country music pop star. And then the album before this was called Red. And she sort of went into different genres and brought them in and made a little more pop music and a little less country. Uh, she got a little crap for that. And instead of like bending back to country, she went pure pop. This album is pure pop. It's synth pop. Uh, it's it's um, you know, the, the big hit on this was called Shake It Off, which is essentially two incredibly infectious pop hooks linked together to create a song. Uh, musically, this is confection, but, uh, but if you're in the mood for it, it's sinfully good. It's, um, I, I really like it when I'm in the mood for it. This is a good album. So then at the other end of this, I'm going to pull out uh, an artist that I know that Michael at Noted in Archive uh, likes. So I'm going to show this also for him. Uh, I'm going to show Bill Frisell. Uh, this is called Rambler. This came out in 85. And um, Bill Frisell in the 80s was really doing interesting stuff. He's done a lot of different kinds of music, everything from uh, American folk, Americana, to avant-garde uh, jazz and rock. Uh, he's done surf guitar. He's done all kinds of stuff. He's played on a million people's albums. So he has, you know, a, I have no idea, 50 albums solo, and then he's been on another 150 albums. He's very prolific. Um, but he really does go off the deep end, uh, especially in the 80s. He was doing really avant-garde stuff, really interesting, really fun. Um, this is on ECM. This is the first pressing. And, um, and I'm going to just pull out a couple of others real quick um, just to show them. Um, this is Look Out for Hope, a little later in the 80s. Again, very avant-garde, very interesting, lots of genres on this. Uh, and this is called Before We Were Born. 
uh, another 80s Bill Forsell. Um, I love Bill Forsell. I've seen him live a number of times. You know, great performer and really interesting musician. And definitely not, oh, although he's done pop music, the 80s Bill Forsell is not pop. So that sort of gives you an idea of the expanse of the kind of music that I like to listen to by its ends. And uh, so the next question is to show an album that you're embarrassed to own, but you don't care because you love it. So I think I already did that with, uh, with uh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> I'm going to go one step further. Uh, this is called Blessed Unrest. It's by Sarah Bareilles. So what got me into Sarah Bareilles was my daughter, uh, fell in love with her. She just loved her music. And we went to a lot of live shows together, my daughter and I, and we went, we saw Sarah Bareilles, I think five times. Um, and each time I went there, I, I couldn't help but notice that almost all of the people that were there were either mothers and daughters or people under 30, uh, females under 30, very few men at the oh, show. Very first album was called Little Voice. And this is the album my daughter discovered. Um, I've been trying to find it. It's like a two to four hundred dollar record and I'm not ready to spend that much on it but um, but my daughter discovered her uh, ten years ago uh, loved her we listened to her all the time in the car and 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 bought all of her records and and I grew to like her music tremendously over that time it has a lot of memories for me and she's actually quite a performer and quite a songwriter uh, she's influenced by Billy Joel and Elton John um, it's not uncommon for her to when she was doing a solo show she actually broke into an Elton John song you know somewhere in the middle of the set um, uh, she's also influenced by uh, artists like Prince, uh, Fiona Apple. In fact, on this album, there's a song called Eden that is uh, definitely influenced by Prince. You can hear it in the song. Uh, there's another one on here called Hercules, which is definitely influenced by Fiona Apple. You can just hear it in her music. Uh, she clearly loves other people's music and is influenced by it a lot. Um, I went to, uh, when, when she was doing a solo show, she actually broke out into uh, The Little Mermaid, um, Part of Your World, I think is the name of the song. She started singing that a cappella, and the whole audience, the whole frickin' audience was singing this song. I didn't know a single word. I was sitting there just kind of chuckling to myself that every single woman in that room knew the words to that song. It's incredibly fun. Uh, so that's my sort of embarrassment. Uh, Sarah Bareilles, um, still looking for a little voice. So the next uh, question is a show, uh, the album you've listened to the most in your collection, either uh, and or uh, recently or of all time. So um, I've done the all time question twice uh, for previous um, uh, uh, vinyl tags and I showed Houses of the Holy by Led Zeppelin one time and I, I showed uh, I think an underrated album Brothers and Sisters by Allman Brothers and those are those are the albums I've listened to the most in a lifetime because I still listen to them today but I played them to death when I was in my teen years back in the early 70s so so uh, the most I'm going to show another album but well, well, let's start with this the most recent album that I'm listening to a lot now uh, is uh, and When by Tone Starts Bandit. Uh, this is uh, two brothers, Edwin and Andy White. And uh, one's a guitar player, one's a drummer. They write songs, they sing. Um, it, it's lo-fi psych rock with uh, interesting vocals, uh, a little art and noise rock mixed in there. Um, God, we love this band. We listen to this all the time. This is... Uh, an original pressing that came out in 2017 on yellow vinyl. I think there was 400 copies of this pressed. And the album itself actually came out in 2009, but it didn't come out in vinyl until uh, 2017. So, uh, and um, songs on this album that I really like, one is called Andy Summers. Uh, it's such a freaking interesting song. And the, the initial uh, drum uh, beats that come in is almost like an, uh, a Stuart Copeland kind of thing that he would do on the beginning of one of his songs. Uh, and then it breaks into this just wild, crazy stuff. 
a great song. Also, they do a song called Little April Showers, which is from Bambi. You know, drip, drip, drop, little April showers. They actually do that as a song and it goes wild and crazy and all over the place. They also do a really beautiful a cappella of a song called uh, Softly Kidding. Um, this is just way out there, interesting, um, avant not kind of avant-garde, psych rock, noise rock, art rock, really good stuff. Love this album and listened to it a lot lately. And so for the other part of this question, I, uh, rather than showing another album that I've listened to a lot my whole life, this just generalized like that, when I get this question from now on, I'm gonna pick a genre and, and choose an album that I've listened to the most in that genre. And so for that, um, this one I'm gonna do classical music. This is Debussy. This is uh, Children's Corner and Images. This came out in 1971. This is a first pressing on, gramoph on uh, Deutsch Gramophone. And, um, and I was listening to this, you know, back in the early 70s. Uh, um, Arturo Benedetti Michelangeli is the piano player. I've heard some of his other stuff. This is the most inspiring piece he's done uh, by Debussy. Uh, it, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and Debussy is kind of an impressionist. Uh, his music can, can sound like, like there's a song on here about snow falling and you listen to it and it sounds like flurries of snow. It's just beautiful. Uh, very French, uh, very impressionistic. Um, also the images, there's a, a song, I think it's on the, for the fourth uh, song in images where he plays tricks on you, WC. He plays tricks, he has, it sounds like there's three hands on the piano. I don't know how he does it, I'm not a piano player, but it starts off with one thing going, then he gets another thing going, then there's a third thing going, and there's only two hands on the piano, and how they do it, I have no idea, but I love how they play tricks like that on The Listener. Uh, great album, this is, this is an album I've listened to a lot. In fact, I probably wore this one out and I'm now listening more to the uh, reissue that came out recently on a 180 gram vinyl. So, great album. So, last question. This is a big one. Um, and I've actually been asked this question before, the first part of it. Who is the first person you watched on the VC? And I'm happy to say it was Norman Maslov. Mazzy Maslov. I love Mazzy's channel. Still watch it a lot. He's absolutely fascinating. He has so many records. It's sick. And he knows so much about him. This guy does a whack-a-mole. Uh, on a regular basis where he just walks up to the wall, grabs a r three or four records out of anywhere, not looking at them, stands there and he tells you all about him. He knows about all of his records. The guy's amazing. Uh, I'll put a link to his channel below too, Norman Maslov. And, uh, and then who's the most recent person that you subscribe to is the other one. Well, for that, I have five whole audio with Dirk. Uh, new guy, I think he's been out a number of months maybe and um, love his channel. Uh, he and I have kind of messaged back and forth about certain music that we like, and I think he's gonna, he's gonna really do well in the VC, and I'll put a link to him below as well. So that's my uh, contest entry for the 500 sub contest for Michael Noted and Archived. Again, I'll put his link below. Please, please, please check all these guys out. They have great channels. And, um, and that was a lot of fun. Thanks for hanging out.